Flush Summer Huntington. I own the Flow Shala here in Bellingham. And today I'll be instructing a core base workout. That's closed hip conditioning and core. We're going to be working on a single legged balance. Now this workout is specifically designed for Naboso Technology Mats. Uh, Dr. Emily Spiegel is one of my colleagues and I have had the honor to teach with her at Barefoot Training Summit in New York City and it's an honor to be able to provide this awesome workout for you guys at home. So I'm excited to share. Uh, make sure you have your Naboso mats. And we'll just get started in a child's pose. Sinking hips to heels, extending the arms out nice and long, resting the forehead onto the mat. Take a big inhale through your back body. Expand in all directions and exhale. And one more time, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, rise, coming onto hands and knees. And we'll start with the feet, your knees hip distance apart, the hands spread wide, fingers spread wide, all the way down to the webbing. Round the back, scoop the pubic bone forward, tuck the pubic bone towards the navel, coming into cat pose, and then inhale, shine the heart forward. Exhale, option to tuck the toes, stretching the plantar fascia and the feet, and inhale, allow the navel to drop all the way down towards the mat. Two more, exhale, tuck it around, and inhale, shine the heart. Notice I'm tucking my toes as I round into the deflection and then pointing the toes, pressing the tops of the feet onto the nervoso mat as I come into extension. Then come back to center, so that sweet spot right between cat-cow. We'll move into thoracic mobility. From here, corkscrew your left hand into the floor, peel your right hand up, look up, all five fingers connected, pressing full fascial tension. Exhale, thread your arms underneath your body, ha. Inhale, peel the right arm up, look up, packing the bottom shoulder, creating that whole uh, full fascial tension through the entire neck chain. Exhale, thread. Again, inhale, reach up, stretch up, and exhale, thread. Back to center, re-engage your torque, so finding that fascial tension, external rotation, shoulder pack, scapular depression, and inhale, peel your opposite left arm up, okay? On your exhale, thread the arm underneath your body. Inhale, peel up, look up and hold. And exhale, thread, ujjayi breath. To trigger your parasympathetic. Inhale, two more. And exhale, thread. Last one, inhale. And exhale, thread. Return to hands and knees. Take narrow knees, find child's pose, hips to heels. From here, lift and step, right foot between the two hands. Now, all of these mobility drills are designed to prime the movement patterns that we'll be using in our workout. So we're working on that closed, chi closed chain or closed hip, um, hip mobility and uh, conditioning. Inhale, heart open. Exhale, shoot the arms forward. Inhale. So here's a close, an open chain mobility drill. We're using the ground to close the kinetic chain here to allow the hip flexor to get an even deeper stretch, firing um, and contracting the quad to engage a deeper range of motion. Last one, inhale. Bend the front knee, reach up and down the waist, inhale. On the exhale, hinge forward, plant the hands on the inside of the foot here, pack the shoulders, drag the knee back, find your hollow body plank position, and hips to heels, child's pose. Inhale, lift, step the left foot forward. See that the feet are on railroad tracks, pack the shoulders. I love working with the nervosa mats because I'm waking up the small nerve proprioceptors in the bottoms of my feet here as I train, pressing the top of the foot into the ground, engaging that hip flexor stretch. Inhale, glide the heart open, extend through fingertips, and exhale. So I'm open chain here up top, inhale, there's no end point, so my arms reach back in space, but here's the end point, I'm a little closed chain down here, and my hip flexor. Exhale, ha. One more, inhale, and exhale, ha. Bend your front knee, reach up and out of the waist, finding your kneeling crescent lunge, inhale. On your exhale, flex your wrist, hinge forward, connect with your mat or surface, pack the shoulders, Again, waking up the small nerve proprioceptors in your hands. And then drag your left leg back. Notice I'm still in a hollow body position. So here is not a hollow body position. I scoop my pubic bone towards my navel. I engage my shoulder path and I'm pressing the tops of the feet into the ground to maintain full connection with the front line fascia. Then I'm in my hollow body. And child's pose, hips to heels. Ha. Last mobility drill. Find your quadruped. Corkscrew the arms into the ground. Again, finding that scapular depression. So I'm co-contracting my lats with my pecs um, and serratus as well. So corkscrewing, turning two jars on the hands, kick the right leg back, flex the foot, rotate the toe open, pull the knee all the way forward towards the arm, pedal back down around and 
through. So charging up glutes and posterior chains is a great primer for single-legged balance, which we'll work on in just a bit. Switch directions. Maintaining breath flow in and out through the nose. Making a hoss on the back of the throat. And float it down. Switch sides. Back to your corkscrew position. Finding that torque. Kick the left leg back. Flex the foot. Rotate. Pull. Around. So you're making that full 360 degree uh, range of motion with your hip. Notice I'm going for full leg extension at that end range. I'm not staying here with a bend knee, but I'm kicking back like I'm breaking through glass. To charge up the glutes. Good job, folks. All right. First core primer. Swing your legs around. Come down onto your back in a spine intelligent way, whatever that means to you. And we'll start with just lying toe taps. So arms alongside your body. Of course, let your abdominals in. Put your mind in pelvic floor. Put your other part of your mind in your transverse abdominis. So stopping the flow of your midstream. Engaging your pelvic floor. Drawing this part of the fascia, so you're just pressing inward from the hip bones. We're drawing that in towards the navel, and of course, setting everything in without holding breath. Arms alongside your body, level one, lying toe taps. Lifting the legs one at a time, keeping a fixed angle at the knee. Level two, reach the foot a little farther away, tap down, reach back to tabletop. So this is a great core primer, just to wake up your deep inner core muscles. Now, as you're doing this, eye base is up, energy shooting out through the fingertips, the toes are pointed. We're developing that torque in the thighs with internal and external rotation. You can aim for five to 10 reps at home. And we're not compressing the lumbar spine into the core, we're keeping a natural S curve in the spine. Rock and roll, bring your body up, cross the legs, press back to child's pose, ha. From here, lift and step, right foot on outside of right hand, squeeze the knee strongly against the arm. So here, you'll see there's actually no gaps between my arm and my legs. I'm finding my shoulder pack here. And in fact, I'm actually going to rotate my mat just a little so you get a nice little angle as we start to progress through the workout. So we lift and step, squeeze the knee against the arm, tone the back glute hard. So put your mind in your back glute and connect your trifecta of your lats, your deep inner core, and your glutes. Pull the leg back, notice I'm in a hollow body position, and then back to child's pose. This is exercise one, lift and step. You can go through different levels of difficulty here. This is level one. And you can do this at time rounds or you can just work on proficiency um, in the movement pattern. So in that case, you could be just working maybe five to 10 reps to build um, competency first. Level two, curl the back toe under, lift the knee. Now notice, this is my leg with a bent knee. I'm looking to fully straighten out the knee and engage my posterior chain, my glutes. Finding that external rotation, it's as if I was driving my back heel into a wall. Then lower the knee, press back to child's pose. Lift and step, pull your body forward, pack those shoulders, squeeze your back glute on. Level two is here. And I can just work those for a bit. Again, working on our skill development, prioritizing our form and alignment over our speed. So if the foot hiccups, we need to regress back to level one. Lift and step, then curl back to under the knee. And then as you progress, level three, moving from a plank position, notice everything is rigid here. My glutes are on, step, back to plank, step, back to plank. This is my mountain climber from plank position. And rest in child's pose. And you can uh, take your hands one palm per forward, curl the toes under, lift your hips up and back, find your down dog. Each 
side, we're just mapping that motor control in our body, seeing if we can maintain torque. A common misalignment with this one is the core of the trunk will fold forward with that passive loosey goosey arms. That's all quad. So I want to evenly distribute the weight between my front back leg, so I'm actually initiating my knee bend with my back leg, and my core, eventually just I'll be holding other um, weights like clubs or knees, maybe even dumbbells, kettlebells here, and keeping them rigid with my hollow body. So step it back. Always recommend that you start with level one, even if you're advanced, just to make sure that you can maintain full fascial tension. So again, we're digging the ball foot into the ground, getting as maximum of um, maximum surface area as we can with the ball of the foot to increase our foot mobility. Pull your back knee down, engage your back knee, you can even touch it and see if it's firing. Drive up. Well notice I'm using a uh, power breath, inhale down, exhale up, inhale down. Torque in both legs, internal and external. TVA on, pelvic floor on, elbows knitted to the ribs. So you can stick with your level one and do another round, five to 10 reps, or let's alternate sides if you want to try uh, the level two. So level two tactical lunge, I enter the lunge, my body is upright, power breath, I step back, the trailing back leg glute is on, and then let's go 10 reps. One, one, two, counter down at home, and we're looking, on, we're looking at skill development. So how can I maintain crown and coccyx alignment, keep my eye gaze on the horizon, and use my power breath, my forceful exhalation, which forces me to contract core, as I step in the lunge. So I promise you, if you really work on the precision alignment, you should be um, having full dynamic tension in your lunge. So if somebody was to try to push me over, I'm not moving because I've really got that Strong uh, dynamic tension, running through the body, running through the entire kinetic chain, and eventually jump switch. Notice how I stay vertical as I enter my switches, level four, drawing the legs up. Chugging breath, inhale, and exhale. So we teach a style of breathing, we call it the chug here at the Flow Shala Virtual Studio. The whole goal is to get you into parasympathetic nervous system tones. We deeply inhale, we pause for a moment, and we exhale. Inhale, pause for a brief moment, exhale. So it's a four to one um, inhale to exhale ratio, or exhaling four times the amount of inhaling. All right, moving into our functional squat. So I'm sure you all have done a squat before. Uh, you probably know what it looks like, but I'm gonna challenge you to do a full flat-footed squat with maintaining full fascial tension throughout your entire kinetic training. So we're talking crown to coccyx, fingertips to toes, I hope you're up for the challenge. So, what it looks like. It's as if I was doing a push up like a hollow body plank at the top, packing my shoulders, palms face each other. So I'm rigid in my lats, my glutes are on and firing. I'm not overly tucked here, neutral pelvis, under butt, nice and toned. Upper butt, nice and toned. The whole globe, getting nice and rigid. From here, we initiate by creating a crease. So there's a hip hinge that happens. Notice, I'm maintaining crown and coccyx line. I come down, I hover. As I rise up, squeeze the glutes, pack the shoulders. And for me, I have a little bit of a kyphosis in my upper back, which is part of my, a um, little bit of family tradition there. So I'm trying to get to the hollow body versus being back here. So, shoot my hands forward, find your hip hinge. Notice my knees stay back behind my toes. Exhale up. Inhale down, work on the neck. Exhale up. Level one. We can stay nice and shallow, generating that torque. Notice my arms are rigid. I've got my triceps on. I'm working that shoulder pack at the top. As I improve my range of motion, come down a little deeper. Body upright, crown the coccyx line, rise up. So stay at level one, or if you'd like to progress to level two, doing a full functional squat, you can. Level three, extend your arms back, lift your heels, come into extension. Squat. Extension. Just mapping that jump as if I were going to leave the ground, I'm getting that full fascial tension in my back line. So a lot of times our posterior chain is to fall asleep because we're in this like rounded form position, we're sitting at a table all day, we're driving, we're sitting in a chair. We want to get here. Yes. Level four. Jump and land. Jump and land. Try to get that moment of hang time where you're pointing your toes at the top of your jump. 
And notice I'm landing in a flat foot squat. Last two. Last one. And then chug your breath. Inhale. And exhale. These are example exercises that we do here all the time. We're in the Boso Technology Studio. We train on these mats. We love them. They're super awesome. And again, we're working on skill. Fitness is only a component of our movement practice, but we really want to work on precision, alignment, and activation. Full fascial tension, proper biomechanics. Okay, moving on to our single-legged squat. Now, I work with a lot of older adults that really have trouble balancing, so things like yoga poses are really challenging. So, in order to condition a single-legged posture, real simple, um, we're gonna engage the motor control patterns needed to be able to stand on one foot with control with full core activation. Looks like this. So, you start with your flat-footed squat, which we just learned and covered. We already covered a lot of the components needed here. As you rise, come to your tiptoe of the outside leg, and then start to palpate here in the outer glutes. We're looking for the knee completely straight, but not locked out. You're driving through the heel, and then here you can have your hands or prayer if that works. Eventually, you'll be lifting the leg and then pressing the hand against the thigh and the thigh against the hand and working in all directions. Notice my foot is flexed. So I find my functional squat. I drive up. Level one is just toe tap on the ground, simulating as if I was going to lift the foot, and then level two is here. I squat. I leg drive. Squat. I leg drive. I'm going straight up, not across. So here. And then when I get to here, I like to have my hand up here to remind me to engage my postural muscles, keeping that counter-coccyx line and connecting. And you'll know if you're able to do level two, if you can stick this, hold it, and your bum is turned up. Uh, two, three more. Level one, here. Level two, lift. Let's go straight into the other side. Squat. Level one, engaging my outer line here, spiraling, creating that full fascial tension. You squat, I toe tap to build the motor control. Squat, next level, I lift the leg, hand to prayer, drive through the base leg. I squat, pull myself down, drive up. You can do it, squat, and leg lift. Squat, leg lift, last one here. Chugging breath, inhale, and exhale. Final exercise, warrior three, Romanian deadlifts. We are doing this without a weight, but oftentimes, We'll train with weights like clubs or mace here at the Flow Shop Virtual Studio. Okay, so let's see, we just ended on our right leg, so let's switch and go to the other side. So um, go ahead and take your right trailing leg back, hands to your hips, find a hip hinge, you're loading your back line, your hamstring, your glute, hands to prayer, rise up. Level one for warrior three RDL is just hinging and simulating that most of that weight will be bared on your base leg. Level two, notice my trunk and leg stay aligned as I lift. I'm mimicking that spinal balance I did at the very beginning. Toe tap here. Level one, I hip hinge, I load, I have a micro bend in my base leg, I'm flexing my foot, that counter-coxic alignment. Rise up, level two, you can lift your legs. Kick back, flexing the foot. We'll call this 1.5, toe tap, and leg lift level two. Three more. Hip hinge, toe on your floor, square up your hips. Common misalignment is to go out like this. We're looking to see that that hip bone points down to the floor. Again, I love using the Devosa mats for this because I'm training my barefoot uh, single-legged balance. This is going to translate over to a lot of my skill in sport and in yoga and in the functional movement of my leg. Last one. Rise up. Switch that. Now my right leg is my base leg. By generating torque or external rotation in that ball and socket joint, I'm going to start to feel my deep rotators turn on within my hip. Take the trailing leg back, find your hip hinge, lengthen. So I'm not rounding here like a human cashew, but I'm staying lift, lifted with a natural S curve in my spine. Rise up. Crown to box six line, hip hinge. And drive up. Level 1.5, lift the leg, let the trunk and leg be in a line, square up those hips and hold. You've got to be able to hold this to regress to level 1.5. You can toe tap or hip hinge. Try a couple of that, those first. Ensure that you have that competency before progressing to level three or two. So our next level will be lifting the leg and holding, kicking back, synchronizing that movement of leg and trunk. 
and drive it out. Last one. And go back. All right, those are five exercises that you can focus on to develop your closed, uh, closed hip conditioning and your single-legged balance and also core activation. So let's cool it down with a little bit of hip mobility. So we'll start with a shin box. Place your right leg forward, your left shin back. Press forward, press back. Five repetitions, just mobilizing that hip in its socket. Next level, you can take your arms straight ahead, rise up, turn shoulder back, come back down. Come to the side view, so we're here. Come back down. Notice, just like in my squat, my arms are straight, shoulders are packed, and I'm doing my closed chain hip mobility drills to allow my hips to open, which will help me and help you access your squat a little better. Switch sides, you can pick up your legs or you can do a shin box switch. I want to stay facing you, so I'm going to stay here so you can see it from all angles. So we first mobilize the hip in its socket, working on internal external rotation. Eventually that progresses to pointed toes, not flexed feet. So you want to get that maximum uh, surface area of the front line of the foot. Arms are straight ahead in line with the hip bones. Drive up, squeeze everything in, engaging the pelvic floor. There's this moment where you're um, going to want to kind of collapse, like right in there. So I encourage you to really keep everything drawing in, so we're adducting in towards the midline as we lower to provide that stability. Last one. Come back down. And we'll end with a little hip flexor stretch. You can your right leg forward, your left leg back, you can roll the tracks. Level one, you grab the elbows. Level two, we capture the hands. Point your fingers up, move the hip. And exhale. Maybe we're taking a lateral bend. We want to increase the hip flexor stretch. Otherwise, you can stay straight up. Other, other option would be to roll the left arm down just a little. And then come back down. Reach forward, plant the palms, child's pose, lift and step, opposite leg forward. Level one, we capture elbows. Level two, we interlace the fingers, creating a bind, full fascial tension, lateral bend. So we can take our lateral bend, set aside. We can option to roll the arm down.